put it up there. Okay, so I, I'm going to talk just about the law, like the law of addition uh, today, which is a great one. Uh, last last week we talked about the law of navigation. So um, if you maybe you can come over here to me, right. like, I'm, <laughs> like I'm like I'm trying to pedal pedal better. So so yeah, so the the law, so the law. Remember the law of navigation is talking about how do we sort of navigate through mm -hmm. these different uh, experiences that we have as leaders, and the law of addition, you know, is basically saying that leaders. Um, you know, add value by serving others. So it's a pretty simple statement, but leaders add value by serving other people. When I look back at my uh, journey as a leader, you know, uh, starting here at the firm and even prior to that, my attitude was always, you know, leadership is about power. Leadership is about uh, getting others to serve you. Uh, leadership was, you know, you better listen to me. So it was all about positional power, status, um, and that manifested itself within a lot of problems. Yeah. You know, we had a dysfunctional culture. Uh, I had uh, a way that I perceived people that was very uh, unhealthy, and it just created a lot of contention, you know, uh, within the culture because everybody's sort of looking out for number one, right? Uh, and that was my perspective was it wasn't about serving other people. It was about me serving the, uh, person of one, you know, I was trying to serve my own interests. What did I want to get? What was I going to accomplish? Uh, which ultimately led to the demise of the partnership that we had, uh, because there was just this sort of almost limited or scarcity mindset of saying, hey, you know, there's only so much in the pie. And so I'm going to get this piece of pie. And then, you know, if there's some left, you'll get a little bit of that too, right? Yeah. So it just was this very uh, dysfunctional way of not serving other people. Yeah. Now, it might have looked like that, but ultimately the question we say is what is the motive I remember when Michael Tucker came and spoke, he's written a book called Grace in the Workplace. Mm -hmm. And if you remember, he talked about some two people could look like they're doing the exact same thing, yeah. getting donuts, bringing them into the office, you know, doing yeah. all of the right things. Uh, but the motive could be completely different. Yeah. I'm doing all of these things in order to get up to that position, that status, that level that I want to get to so that I can have more money, more power, more control, more fame, right. right? Versus the other person could legitimately just come in and be like, hey, I just, you know, I love people. I want to serve them. Uh, I do want to have influence. I want to have impact uh, for sure. But the motive is different. I want to serve people, add value to their life, see them flourish, see them grow, right? So again, something can be really deceiving, with the, this whole notion, because it can look very much the same uh, on those things. So any thoughts on that so far? Yeah, I agree. I think it's, it's important to point out, like, if someone does good with their whole heart, it shows too, because even though two people can be bringing donuts every week, you usually can sense, like, if you have that connection with each one you'll kind of know okay this person's just trying to get ahead but this person genuinely cares right correct and i think that also takes effort from both sides where are they investing in the relationships or are they just doing it to impress the num numero uno as yes. they call it like correct. the number one guy number so one guy. yeah so who are we trying to really impress yeah. and yeah. How, how does that show out yeah yeah that's good you know, John goes on, he he says in the 21 Irrefutable Laws of Leadership in this, he says, he, he talks about what I thought mm -hmm. was serving is what I should do, right? This mm -hmm. is something that I should do. It's obligatory. Uh, it's positional status. It's, you know, what I talked about, he said, versus what he does now and what, you know, God has done for me is what do I get to do? Right. What's what is the uh, the heart posture of it, which is this is more around the heart of valuing people. OK, 
seeing them as valuable and going, oh my gosh, I get to do this, not I have yeah. to do this, right? Exactly. Two totally different perspectives of like, oh my gosh, I have to go to work. Mm -hmm. I have to do this. It's like, no, I get mm -hmm. to do this. What a yeah. what a blessing it is that we get to be in these positions of serving and delighting the client ultimately. True. And he goes through three different things that I really like. He says, when you see people as weak, he goes, when I see people as weak, I will help you. So that's one sort of phase, right? When I see people as weak, I will help you. When I see you as broken, I will fix you. But when I see you as valuable, I will serve you. So interesting perspectives. When I see you as somebody that's weak, I'm going to help you. When I see you as broken, I'm going to try to fix you. Yeah. But when I see you as valuable, serve you. I'll serve you. Right. Yeah. So just an interesting, and I've done probably all three of those. It's like, yeah. oh, that person's weak and I need to help them. And that's how I see them. Yeah. Right. As a weak person. Uh, or when I see them as broken, right. It's like I get to, now I'm going to fix you. I get to fix things and I feel good about it. But when I see somebody as valuable, I'm like, no, I get it. I guess serve them. Yeah. Right. Kind of like when we go look at the homeless, you know, it's yeah. like, you know, do I see them as valuable or do I see them as, oh, you're just a homeless yeah. person. Right. Exactly. Um, so that's definitely a battlefield. So what are your thoughts on those? Statements? Yeah, I agree. I think it's important to understand, like, and it's always interesting when I ask someone what they do for their work, they always say, well, not always, but often I'll hear them say, I'm just the, the account executive for somewhere. I'm like, you're just the account executive? Yeah. I think you're more than that. You yeah. know, you probably do a lot more than just the account executive. Mm -hmm. You know, so that's always like, how do we drill into that and have, it has to be a mutual sense of value for themselves and yeah. also for you. So yeah. it's, how do we turn that into, I'm an account executive and I have all these responsibilities, but I love what I do and I serve others authentically every day. So, yeah. you know, it's almost like getting out of that mindset of putting yourself down because you're not confident in your abilities to be great. So yes, I do think it's important to yeah. identify that and then also expand on it. Yes, so. 100%. Yeah, just training yourself to see not only yourself as valuable, but to others see as others as valuable yeah, too. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, and so it's, it's a good way to, you know, adding, that's why he calls it the law of addition is how do I, if, Every day I get up and go, how do I add value to my wife? How do I add value to my kids? How do I add value to you guys? How do I add value to the, you know, so you're just asking that question and it's a fun one because it almost becomes a challenge. Like, how can I add more value? Like, what could I do to serve better? Uh, and that's when it becomes fun because you're not myopic. You're just like, it's expansive to go like, no, I think I could do more. Yeah. And how far could I go with this? And what could that look like? And you're outward focused, yeah. you know, and there's a lot of joy in that sure. where the mindset of like, no, what can I get into? We wonder why people are so miserable. <clears throat> yep. Me, 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 what can I get? And what am I going to get out of this? And it's like, oh my gosh, no wonder you're so sad yeah. because you're just, you're so inward focused. You, they're not looking out, yeah. you know, which is our design. It's true. Yeah, it's very true. He's, he says here um, what he thought was leadership knowledge was foundational for leading. And what he got was leadership motives are foundation for foundational for leading. So he, again, he's just talking about in his youthfulness, my youthfulness, yeah. this is what I thought. What you find out eventually is that the motive is what matters the most, right? Yeah. Why am I doing the this? Behind it. Yeah, what's what's behind it? And what he wraps up and said, he said, here, he said, let me just help you make this really easy uh, and to make this come to life. He said, just get over yourself. <laughs> <laughs> okay. He said, just get over yourself. You know, we get so... Yeah. We're all susceptible to this. We get so into ourselves mm -hmm. that it just is becomes detrimental. It goes, just get over, just get over yourself. Awesome. Yeah, you're not not that important. I mean, you're obviously valuable, but just get over yourself. You yeah. know, don't 
don't try to to make make it so that you're so important that you can't you know deal with that so that's the law of addition 